Hi! Welcome to a new film recapped. Today we're watching, Limitless, a fantastic story. Enjoy! A loud knock on a metal door opens to a luxurious apartment full of boxed-up possessions. Two dead bodies are discovered during a brief tour of the upscale apartment building. And Eddie is perched above the structure, sitting directly atop a balcony. As soon as he steps away from the edge, he hears two gunshots coming from the flat next door. It seems that his neighbor heard the noise. Eddie's door has someone yelling at them to let them in. Eddie feels let down by himself. Does he make a leap? Eddie is seen strolling down the street slightly more than a year ago, and he looks entirely different. He claims to be a writer. He is telling two people about his novel while drinking at a bar during lunchtime, but no one thinks he has a contract for it. If he knows it himself is the question. He is spotted writing, making an attempt to write, putting things off till he eventually moves out of his flat and departs to get back to his drinking. He doesn't write a word for several weeks or even months at a time. His girlfriend Lindy eventually breaks up with him. Eddie finds it surprising, but she obviously doesn't. As he prepares to pop the question, she brings up his previous marriage, to Melissa. That marriage did not have a happy ending. Later, he sees Vernon, his ex-brother-in-law, while strolling home and feeling depressed about everything in general. Eddie is not awaiting his appearance. Vernon gets him into having a drink with him after they have some small talk during which they both lie to one another about what they are doing. As they enter a pub, he updates him on Melissa's condition. Subsequently, the topic of Eddie's creative problems arises, and Vernon offers to assist him. He demonstrates the medicine to him. It's a designer medicine of some sort, apparently able to open up your entire brain. It won't help Eddie, in his opinion. Vernon offers him a sample of the pricey medicine and his business card as he has to depart. Eddie chooses to take the substance while still wallowing in self-loathing on his walk home. Valerie, his landlord's wife, greets him as soon as he enters his building and instantly becomes enraged with him. When it finally undertakes, his mind is racing, thinking about the effects of the medicine, while she's shouting at him. All of a sudden, he begins to notice things that he had not noticed before. The small details surrounding him, the small details about her. He asks her what's wrong once, which takes her by surprise. He starts to access memories in his head that he didn't even know he had while they talk about her studies. She begins to warm up to him and he offers to help with her essay. And they have sex after finishing the essay. He is instantly struck by how unclean and repulsive his apartment is as soon as he steps inside. Consequently, he begins repairing and tidying it, arranging everything so that it appears like a real home. He is really clear-headed now that he's taken the medicine. Thus, he writes, the one thing he knows he ought to be doing with clarity. And he's really doing it this time. Eddie feels as though the medicine has worn off completely when he wakes up the following morning. He visits his publisher after learning that he still possesses the written chapters from his work. Eddie requests that she read the rough draft of the manuscript and says he will return the money if she is not pleased. She sends him three more messages as soon as he gets home, complimenting him on how excellent what she read was. Eddie decides to see Vernon instead of giving her a call again. Reluctantly opening the doors for him, he gives off the impression that someone has beaten him severely. Vernon, who is aware of his motivation, tells him that he must complete several errands for him before giving him more of the medicine. Eddie leaves the flat to pick up some breakfast and drop off his dry cleaning, only to return to discover the door unlocked. Vernon is sitting on his couch while the entire place has been trashed. Eddie approaches and discovers he has passed away. He phones the police right away, and as he waits for them to arrive, he discovers that the individuals who appeared to be searching for the drugs had never located them. He then starts his own search for himself. In the end, Eddie finds the drugs, some cash, and Vernon's black book. The cops show up at the door out of nowhere. He is questioned in a police station later on. Eddie's story and the detective's suspicions are mutual. Melissa makes a call to the detective's desk requesting to talk with Eddie. She informs him that she will call him when everything is finished and that she does not want him to attend Vernon's funeral. Eddie, fearing he is being followed, walks out of the police station. After arriving home, he sums the money and takes one tablet, which starts a montage in which he fully rediscovers both the drug's power and himself. He first gets new clothes and a haircut, completes his book and sends it to the publisher. He picks up the piano in three days and picks up new languages with ease, which he then utilizes to approach women. Suddenly, he can utilize math to win in poker. He is aware of the medication prescription his aunt with cancer requires. He is a bright guy who could hold a conversation with Wall Street types and discuss business. 
he even receives a job offer from one of them. Eddie meets new people, wealthy ones who take him on vacation in mansions with swimming pools and private jets. However, he begins acting recklessly and requires increasing amounts of adrenaline shots. He eventually realizes that writing is not what he has to accomplish. Back at his flat, we witness him taking the pill and glancing at the trade statistics. Trading isn't going to provide him with the money he needs to accomplish his goals. At a cafe, Eddie searches for a loan shark. He gains his trust and gives him $100,000. The loan shark warns him what will happen if he doesn't return the money when they meet for the drop at a park. He later accepts the job that was offered to him earlier and soon learns how to double the amount of money he invested. Eddie is approached for a meeting by one of the larger names in the banking industry after he makes an impression on them. During supper, he tells Lindy about it and wins her over with an Italian meal. In an effort to win her back, he apologizes to her and attempts to be charming. They reconcile and resume their romantic relationship. He starts to feel as though someone is following him as time goes on and he achieves greater success. He begins experiencing unusual symptoms one evening while he and Lindy are in his apartment. He meets Carl Van Loon for lunch with his boss the following day. Eddie tries to impress the man by telling him about his impressive pattern recognition skills. Van Loon gives him a ride home and instructs him to review some paperwork while in the car. Eddie evaluates what he's read for him when they go to his apartment. After being impressed, the man schedules another meeting with him. Eddie walks instead of going home because he is too excited to go home and plans his future, even considering being president one day. All of a sudden, he begins to feel weird again, as though time had changed drastically. So, not knowing how he got there, he just keeps wandering till he comes to a pub. Next, he's in a hotel with a girl and then at a party with another. He fears he's being followed. Later, after realizing he's learned how to fight from watching boxing on TV and kung fu movies, he begins a brawl in the subway. He is unable to remember the previous 18 hours of his life as he dashes across the city and abruptly finds himself atop a bridge. Eddie feels awful when he wakes up the following day. He chooses not to take another tablet and attempts to read the materials Van Loon sent him, but they don't appear to be readable. Eddie shows up for the meeting unprepared and sober. Van Loon is asking him questions all the time, expecting intelligent replies, but Eddie is only able to pay attention to the TV because the news is stating that the woman he was staying with at the hotel has passed away. He abruptly ends the meeting. The phone rings when he arrives home. Melissa is here. Later that day, he invites her to meet him. Eddie begins phoning the individuals on the list after recalling Vernon's black book. All of the people on the list are either severely ill or deceased. The man who followed him and is seated on the same bench as him has the final number he calls. Eddie spots him and runs, with the man pursuing him. When he eventually gets inside a taxi, he loses him. When he meets Melissa, she informs him that she used the drug as well and that she hardly survived when she quit. Upon noticing that he has been taking it too, she advises him to taper off gradually as it may be fatal otherwise. Eddie returns home, where the loan shark is waiting for him, and things only get worse from there. The man swallows the last of his tablets. The man appears to be unaffected by the drug as Eddie takes the money he owes him from the bank. After Eddie gives him his money, he claims to feel fantastic but that his intelligence hasn't changed much. Eddie later wanders into Lindy's office. He begs her to bring him the narcotics he has stashed in her apartment after telling her everything. When Lindy returns to the workplace, she phones Eddie to let him know that she is being followed by a man, even though she finds them quickly. The man can be seen approaching her as her cab is stopped in traffic. Eddie gives her a warning to flee, and the man follows behind. Lindy rushes into a park and approaches two men for assistance. She flees once more as the man approaches them and stabs them both. Calling Eddie while hiding, Lindy lets him know she's scared and stuck. She takes one of the tablets as he instructs her to. All of a sudden, Lindy is also affected by the medicine. She experiences the same thing Eddie did after taking it for the first time and takes off running, knowing just what to do. She is being followed everywhere she goes until she leaves him helpless and flees. When Lindy reaches Eddie, she hands him a tablet. Together, they register at a hotel. When Lindy gets ready to depart the next morning, Eddie tries to convince her that he'll be back on track. She doubts this, though, having used the medication herself. She is afraid of drugs, but he sees their benefits. Despite Eddie's assurances that he will eventually stop using drugs, she departs. Eddie approaches the loan shark when he notices that he is waiting for him. He offers the man a few medications to tide him over since he wants more. 
Afterwards, he visits Van Loon and employs two bodyguards to accompany him around. Van Loon still grants Eddie the job even when Eddie apologizes for the meeting and explains that he was sick, since he had already won the man over. After arranging the largest merger in Van Loon's history, he recovers. Rather than waiting to see if his supply of the drug runs out, he visits a chemist and offers to pay him $2 million if he can replicate it in six months. One day, Eddie is having lunch when the detective stops by to say hello. He tells him that he's been identified as the man fleeing out of the hotel when the young woman was killed. Eddie then gets the best attorney to help him out. Later, he discovers that Atwood, a man on the other side, is ill while attending a significant meeting to discuss the merger with Van Loon. The next day, they would get together again to sign the deal. After the meeting, Eddie talks to Van Loon and he threatens him not to make him his rival, claiming that whatever makes him that excellent at his profession is a gift, not something acquired through hard work. When Eddie returns to the motel, his room is in chaos. He purchases the opulent apartment that was shown at the start of the movie. Later on, the entirely changed loan shark resurfaces when he runs into her again. He threatens to tell his boss about his run-in with the law unless Eddie brings him more tablets. Van Loon and Eddie are waiting for Atwood to arrive and sign the merger paperwork the following day. His wife visits their offices when he doesn't show up, claiming that he is ill but would sign the contract as soon as he recovers. After they accompany her outside, Eddie notices that the man who has been pursuing him is getting into the car with her. The medicine was causing her husband's illness. Eddie gets into a lineup at the police station with his lawyer. Fortunately, he is not pointed out. He turns away from the loan shark and returns to the Van Loon office, where the employee is watching the news. They're writing about the blend. While telling him that Atwood is dying, his new boss is upset with him for it. It's the merging that worries him. Eddie exits after realizing he needs to take another tablet, but he can't seem to locate his stash. When a box for him arrives, he returns to the workplace. Eddie opens the package and discovers his bodyguard's severed hands inside while Van Loon continues to press him for information. He quickly leaves and returns to his apartment. He hears Atwood's wife lie about the merger in a statement that she is making while listening to the news there. His lawyer, who is also her lawyer, takes over the interview. The loan shark is ringing the doorbell and requesting that he open the door. Eddie can then be seen perched on his balcony. He doesn't make any leaps. He searches for a tablet, trying to recall where he could have placed it. As soon as he does, he drops it right before the loan shark enters his apartment. He explains that he uses a medication that is administered via vein while his goons seize Eddie and put him down. While torturing Eddie to extract the information, he shoots up and orders his men to locate his stash. As their boss leans over to be stabbed by Eddie, the thugs are too busy trying to unlock his safe to hear it. After executing him, Eddie consumes his blood to satisfy his drug cravings. He is able to repel the thugs since it is effective. He eliminates the first one before taking out the second. Meanwhile, Atwood dies at the hospital. After Eddie arrives, the man who followed him is seen sitting down next to him. Subsequently, the same man assists him in discovering additional drugs in the lawyer's apartment after the lawyer stole Atwood's stash. Eddie is running for the Senate and has a book out a year later. In his office, Van Loon is waiting. After a brief exchange of words, Van Loon informs him that he is aware of the substance. He informs him that he closed his lab that morning and offers to give him the drug if he works for him in the future. Eddie declines to work with Van Loon and refuses to get in the car as they leave the workplace to go to lunch. Eddie informs him that he has discovered a way to modify the medicine and stop using it without losing any of its benefits. He sees everything, and he is invincible. Eddie sends Van Loon on his way, declining any chance of collaboration. He strolls over to a restaurant, where he meets Lindy. Subscribe for more movies.